Hello everyone and welcome back to my Efficient Design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I hope to test a new launcher, a new SSTO retrievable system that will be able to bring a heavier payload into orbit on a single launch and uh, in so doing I hope to uh, fulfill some contracts and uh, I think my target will be Bop this time. Now I could go for Duna and Ike as you can see here but I don't think we're really lined up for that. And we've got an Explore Jewel, Explore Bop, and Science Data from Space Around Jewel. And so those are good. The Plant of Flags give us 5 and 7 years. So that should be enough time to get to Jewel. Though maybe we should uh, quickly handle this uh, Plant of Flag on the Moon. Maybe uh, Plant of Flag on the Moon would be a good test for the new system before we head out to Jewel. Let's take a look at the at the tracking station to see where the planets are at. So as you can see here, uh, Joule is uh, at somewhat less than a 90 degree angle with uh, Kerbin. Ideally you want it at about 96, so about here-ish. But the transfer should still be okay. Uh, not too taxing. Uh, Duna is in uh, completely the wrong place, though I'm not completely. Uh, it's actually not too far off. All Kerbin has to do is catch up with it, perhaps uh, in about a third of a year it would catch up with Duna or something like that. So uh, I, I also thought about going to Drez but that would take even longer. The angle between uh, Kerbin and Drez is 82 degrees and so right now it's uh, less than that already and uh, Kerbin will go faster so basically you have to do a whole orbit before it can uh, get into position for a transfer with Drez. So the priority is uh, Jewel first then uh, Duna then than Drez. And I think the rocket I've built can handle all of them as long as the landing we're doing at uh, Jewel is on Bop, which is the plan. So uh, if it was on one of the heavier moons it might not be so easy. Okay, but uh, first let's uh, handle that uh, one plant a flag on the moon and uh, by that test our new system. Okay, so here we are. This is the super lander on the OVX. Now, I left off on OV7 was the last one, but actually I had designed uh, two more different uh, orbital vehicles, uh, different uh, SSTO systems that we could retrieve, but they didn't give much benefit over the OV6 or OV7. So I decided that since they weren't giving much benefit, I would just scrap them. And this was the next design, and I went with uh, 10, so it's actually OV10. Uh, it uses four skipper engines at the bottom here, as you can see, and the goal is to lift 12 tons to uh, to orbit. And again, single stage, you can see the parachutes at the top here. They're heavier, but uh, I need fewer of them to bring it back down. You can see the landing struts. No point trying to have them hold the rocket on the launch pad because the rocket is so heavy with all of its fuel that they just collapse. Okay, so uh, it needs to be empty for them to be able to hold it at all, I think. And uh, the reason why it's a super lander is because it's actually two landers. Uh, it's got uh, one lander stage here. This fuel is just uh, lander legs and fuel here. And it feeds the fuel up to these. And then this is the second stage and it also has landing legs. So this can potentially land at two locations, which is important. And maybe we'll do that at the moon. So, yeah, you'll see that these engines are sort of tilted out. This is a little uh, neat trick that you can do. Uh, RCS tanks, this is an empty RCS tank. And uh, RCS tanks empty are 0.05, which is the same as a radial decoupler, and you can attach them radially. So this is a way to have these uh, small um, 48-7Ss attached radially because they're so efficient. They have a very high thrust-to-weight ratio. For those who haven't taken a look at this, uh, you just take uh, max thrust divided by mass, so this has something like 216 thrust to weight ratio. This has 250. Um, this one has, uh, well, it's less than 200 anyway. And uh, you'll see that the Rockamax 48.7S has 330 divided by 0.1. That's huge. In fact, it's the best uh, that we've got. Uh, the worst is probably the LVN, which has uh, about... Uh, uh, less than between 30 and 40 and um, this one has 120 
the LV909, somebody mentioned how much more efficient the uh, 487S is than the LV909. The LV909 has a thrust weight ratio of only 100 compared to the 487S's 300, which is why that happens. So, and the Poodle is also about 100. And this is a big problem because actually in real life, upper stage engines are the ones with the lower thrust weight ratio, uh, um, higher thrust weight ratio usually. At least they seem that way to me. Uh, they're, they're very lightweight engines. So, yeah, I don't know why we have this, but... And the reason, there's a good reason for that. The, the reason that they're lighter weight engines is because in the vacuum, you don't need as high a chamber pressure. And so the actual uh, combustion chamber for the rockets doesn't need to be as heavy as uh, the surface stage rockets. But uh, we seem to have the opposite situation with the LV-909 and Poodle. I have no idea why. But yeah, just a little side note. So I have these two and uh, that's good enough to land on places with about, uh, let's say, uh, 0.5 Gs of gravity. So we can't do Tyler or Leith with this sort of thing. And it doesn't have enough Delta V for it anyway. But uh, Duna, Ike, uh, Bob Paul, probably even Val, the Moon, Minmus, all that is good. Okay. So, oh, and there is a transfer stage here, but it's uh, only got enough fuel for about uh, sort of a Duna-ish transfer, so probably some of this stage will have to be burned in order to get to somewhere like Jewel. Okay, anything else I need to talk about? This thing barely lifts off the ground because of the way it is, but the important thing is whether we can bring it back. Yep. So, crew... Tom Doss. I don't remember using Tom Doss. I'm going to go with Tom Doss for this one. So this is the moon test of this rocket, okay? So let's uh, head out to launch pad and get things going. Okay, here we go with Tom Doss Kerman. SAS on, throttle is up, and... Oh, I forgot to mention, it is not only uh, four skippers. There's one tiny little LV T45 in the middle there, and that's because... It, if you don't have that there, it, it, the, I was worried about the structural integrity of it because there's no thrust on the center stack. And also, we needed a little bit more thrust in order to get thing, this thing off the ground safely. So, actually, it doesn't really contribute much in terms of thrust, but um, probably still helpful. We'll see. Let's hope this does, doesn't shake itself to pieces. I attached uh, these tanks with radial decouplers instead of directly to the body of the of the tiny uh, FLT 800 tanks so hopefully that helps all right uh, here we go Tom Das Kerman looks confident as the rocket uh, is performing well so far. At least it didn't fall to pieces on the launch pad. That would have been embarrassing for me. I don't know if this is enough parachute to bring this stage back. It's tough to say. Certainly it would have taken like three times as many of the radio parachutes considering how many it took for the uh, OV-6 and all. And that probably wasn't an option. Also, we don't have the 2.5 meter nose cones yet, so I would have had to do something like I've got here anyway, with the, what are these called? These adapters plus the, the other nose cones. So might as well put parachutes on. This is certainly a wider rocket than I normally try to uh, create, and the reason for that is, of course, having a wide base for landing. I think uh, it might even be able to float properly thanks to the wide base, I think. We may or may not get a chance to test that this time. Well, it looks pretty stable so far. Should be, I used plenty of struts on it. You can sort of see the struts going around. Oop. Lots of struts. 
And that's because initially I thought about just having the four skippers, no engine on the center. And for that you really do need to uh, get the struts tight, but uh, I ended up putting the center engine anyway because my calculations showed that this could barely get off the ground anyway otherwise. Okay, pitch program time. Okay, we're in orbit, uh, 70 by 91. So, this system works for now. Let us uh, separate and Tom Das Kerman will be free. Uh, let's see if I action grouped his solar panels. Yes, I did. Okay, solar panels extending, but first we need to bring our reusable launcher back down. This is the, once again the experiment, uh, the most common experiment in this series. And uh, what I'll try is, let's say the, the KSC is going to move to around here by the time we get back. Going to retro burn. And I, I don't want to get it too low because otherwise we'll be because we're already very close to the atmosphere. The atmosphere will be giving us drag as it is. So maybe yeah, maybe let's go for fifty kilometers as a test. Okay. And from a, let's say, average 80 kilometer orbit, uh, it's 70 by 91, so. Unfortunately, the KSC is going to be in the dark. Lots of fuel, though. Fuel is good. And again, you don't need too much fuel to do this sort of thing. Um, yeah, what have we got there? Probably like, what is it, 4% uh, of our total fuel? Tough to have a real reference. I'm, I'm trying to see where the, the peninsula over here might be, but can't really see it. Okay. Well, let's see what altitude I end up uh, hitting the continent at. Okay, I think we're at the edge of the continent. There's the coastline. We're at uh, 33 kilometers, let's say, give or take. We are landing a little bit short. So, above 33 kilometers on the approach. Probably something like 34 would be good when hitting the continent. Let's get surface and parachutes. Parachutes. How far away are we? Uh, let's say 40 kilometers. Okay, uh, parachutes are open, 8.6 meters per second. Let's give it a tiny bit of thrust to bring it to, let's say, 6 meters per second. Okay, it's on the surface. And it is stable and intact. All right, just a little bit far away from the KSC, but otherwise quite successful. All right, recover this. Okay, uh, 94,500 funds recovered, which gives you an idea how expensive that thing is. We better recover it. But yeah, 96.2%. Uh, uh, That's okay, all right. Um, yeah, well, uh, it's dark here, so we might as well just go ahead with the other mission. Otherwise, what I would have said was maybe we should launch another one for Jewel because uh, in the time being, 
as we do the moon mission, Jew will get further and further out of position. But uh, we don't want to launch at night anyway. Okay, though this is also in night time, but not for long. Let us plot for the moon quickly. Okay, that looks good. By my calculations, the transfer stage has about 1,300 meters per second delta V, then the two lander stages have about 2,000 apiece. Okay, let's ignite this engine and go. This is of course the LV-909, the, the one with the lower thrust to weight ratio. Oh, I should mention, I've uh, put these parachutes on the top here, and the reason for that is simply aerodynamics. It uh, turned out, uh, you know, the the 1.25 meter nose cone that we all know and love has a mass of 0.03, but the 0.625 meter nose cone, uh, which would fit on here, has a mass of 0.1, which would have, like, uh, which was not good. And this parachute also has a mass of 0.1, so it made no sense not to use the parachute instead of the nose cone. If the nose cone had been lighter, I suppose it must be a typo. I mean, it must be that that nose cone, the nano cone, or whatever it's called, uh, no, a, a standard NC cone or something? Anyway, uh, that must be 0.01 it should be, because otherwise there's no reason for the, for the larger nose cone to weigh less than the smaller one. And also there's no reason for the nose cone to weigh the same mass as this parachute. But yeah, so that's why we're using the parachutes on there, not because they're strictly necessary, though, though uh, it will help bring this whole vehicle down if, if they don't break things off, of course. Let's see... Oh... Okay, I guess we can do that. Alright. So, out Tom Das Kerman goes towards the moon, and I'm just going to send him out as far as necessary until the KSC is in daylight again. Okay, looks like he's still three hours away. And the KSC should be in Dawn by now. So let's uh, launch our Jewel mission actually. Let's not delay on that. I just decided to pop in and check the contracts again. And uh, there's nothing interesting as far as our Jewel mission or Moon mission are concerned. But there is this toroidal air spike test in a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. And that's a lot of funds for that sort of test. I can't resist. I'm, I'm gonna pick it up. I mean, if they're gonna give you that much, you can't say no, right? Okay, so this is a completely retrievable aerospike test. You will note the four Rockamax 48 7S's. Is this enough thrust? Hold on a sec. This is very close to the borderline here. Let's uh, say 1.5 for the toroidal aerospike and just tally things up from there. I'm gonna put uh, one extra one of these on the center. No, no, just... how did that happen? Oh, like that, huh? Okay. Alright, yes, one of those on the center. And because that's on the center, we can shift these down, I think. Okay, all the connections still look good. Okay. I think that's that's all we need. Except we need to make sure the stage is with the rest of them. Alright, let's take it out to launch pad and test this aerospike. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and launch.
I mean, not only are these little guys lightweight, they're also extremely cheap, so that's another side benefit. Okay, now it should cover the entire altitude range, so we're good. Let's coast up there. Okay. Test confirmed. Let's shut that one down. Unfortunately, this has a lot of its mass right at the top here. On the bright side, we got uh, 6 meters per second on the dot. So we can slow to less than that, but let me wait a little bit. Uh, okay, quickly, quickly recover. <laughs> I don't trust it. It looked like it was going to tip over. Okay, so we got that contract done. Plenty of funds out of that. Let's launch the mission to Bob. We don't need to go into the VAB. Um, where are we? That's the launcher. There we go. Super lander. Not Jeb. Not Jeb. Lem Kerman. Okay, let's launch Lem Kerman over to Bop. Okay, so here we go with Lem. SAS on, throttle is up. And yeah, let's go. Hopefully we're in a good time for transfer and it's not too far off, despite the fact that it's not quite at the right phase angle. We'll, we'll just have to see. If it turns out Lem can't uh, head off to uh, Jewel right now, maybe we'll transfer him to Duna instead and have him do both Duna and Ike. Uh, I guess we could do both Bop and Paul because we've got the two landers. We'll see. It depends on our fuel situation. Lem is not as sanguine as his predecessor here. He looks very worried. Gonna start the gravity turn, not gravity turn, pitch program earlier. Bit of a wiggly on the payload there. Okay, burning for orbit here. Okay, uh, 79 by 77, uh, probably 80 by 78 actually. Alright, safe orbit and limb can be decoupled. Okay, limb is on his way. Let's extract his solar panels first and then switch back. Alright, now doing a very similar descent that we planned last time we wanted let's say around here-ish let's go for no let's go for 40 this time Okay, I'm at my main retro burn point, and it looks like I still need to do one. So let me undo physical time warp, turn to retrograde, and pull the orbit down a bit. Okay, let's say till there. That's easy to remember. Okay, let's see what altitude we cross onto the continent. Hmm, seems like we're definitely too shallow. Let me see if I can turn it right here, otherwise we're going to be in trouble later. Let's readjust a little bit. Let's 
so we're hitting land higher, but we're also shallower than last time, so it's a bit complicated. This is why when approaching from an arbitrary orbit, you can't always tell what's going to happen. And this is just a difference between a 80 kilometer and 78 kilometer orbit. But it's not bad. Ending up on land is a plus. I would rather not hit the water. Okay. That's good. We've got full deployment. And let's begin landing burn. Let's try and take it to 5 meters per second. Okay. Looks like it landed steady to me. Recover vessel. So this looks like it'll be our go-to launcher for the time being. Retrievable. Expensive, but still retrievable. And now I'm going to turn to, well, we've got two missions in the way, a moon mission and a bot mission. Both call the same thing, unfortunately, but uh, not too hard to tell them apart. Uh, this one, I think we've got enough time to transfer to Jewel. Okay, making a non-ideal Jewel transfer. This is going to take some time, so I'll see you once I've got something plotted. Huh, actually it didn't take so long at all, thanks to Jules' massive girth. Okay, I don't see any uh, encounter with any particular moons on the way, so we're just going to take the Jewel arrow break. Okay, the LV-909 is out. We... I'm gonna find out whether I've tilted the the upper engines enough to avoid the tanks. I think I have, but uh, let's see. Okay, uh, looks good to me. Now, why we lost the maneuver node, that I do not know. There was no uh, command module on the portion that we left behind, so... I don't know why we lost... Did I accidentally click something? I must have accidentally clicked something. Oh well. Okay, let's see if we're getting closer or further. Closer, closer. Up, ah, there we go. We seem to have it set as a target, but we're not getting our our nodes. Okay, well, uh, based on what it says here, it's a thousand eight hundred kilometers away with this sort of approach. That's fine. I'll leave it at that. Though I think uh, it could do with some tweaking. Anyway. Point is that Lem Kerman is now on his way to Jewel, and we'll find out what happens to him in the next episode. In this episode, I'm going to continue with the Moon mission, which is technically a test mission, but we're we're sort of already doing the main mission already. Okay, so here's Tom Das Kerman in the vicinity of the Moon, and here's the Moon right there. So, just uh, plotting for orbit and then a landing. Need to land in some location that we haven't landed a Kerbal before and then plant a flag. But I probably won't be returning him in this episode because maybe we'll want to land him in a different spot. And perhaps the thing to do would be to leave him on the moon, wait for a new contract to do something on the moon, like science on the surface or anything, and then do the rest of the mission. So he'll be hanging out on the moon for a while. He's got enough fuel after all. Right now he's got more than a 
more than 4,000 meters per second, so yeah, no problem doing subsequent missions on the moon. It would be a waste to bring him back. Okay, uh, 97 by 67. Let's just burn for a landing. Doesn't look like I've been here, or at least I haven't planted a flag there. Seems good enough to me. Okay, initial descent burn complete. Here we go. Let's retract solar panels and start the descent burn. Gonna aim a bit south and try to hit either this patch or this patch, probably this patch here. Okay, that's the end of that stage. Now, lander stage. Again, weird effects once we release that. Interesting. Gotta lower... Ah, that only lowers one at a time. But if I press gear, it'll lower both sets. Uh, I guess that's okay. Yeah, there's nothing obstructing anything. Okay. Whip almost went the wrong direction on the time warping there. Thankfully, they do have the time warping limits. Okay, we are on the ground. All right, and the uh, specification said Tom Los Kerman should plant a flag. So let's extend the ladder. The ladder, of course, is tilted out a little bit so it avoids some of the obstructions. It doesn't go all the way to the surface, though. No way to uh, have a ladder extension all the way out here. So, uh, but that's that's good enough. Tom Los. It's going to be a bit of a jump there. Oh, backflipped. Okay. All right. Maybe. No. Well, yeah, there we go. Come on. This is your big moment. Uh, take surface sample. Northwest crater. Keep data. UV report. Keep data. Plant a flag. We've got that. Okay, Tom Nas at, uh, well, we'll abbreviate Northwest Crater. Okay, uh, the first of many landings, we'll say. Uh, is that right? Oh, okay, good enough. Because we've definitely got the fuel for it, and uh, Tom Doss is going to be doing a lot more exploring on the moon than any Kerbal has done before in this save. Now, he has to get back in the capsule, though. That should be fun. Forward, Tom Doss, forward. Grab. Good boy. Okay, up you get. We do have other experiments here. Log gravioli detection stuff. Should I keep or transmit? Hmm. I don't want to have uh, Tom Doss go out and grab it. Let's just transmit the data. Let's uh, get solar panels out though. 
Okay, let's transmit this data. We can do the remainder some other time if necessary. Okay, and seismic scan. Okay, finally let's get the temperature scan out. Again, could get more science out of all this, but uh, for now I think this is sufficient. And Tom Loss is going to be getting much more than this. But I also wanted to take a final look as we leave Tondas here and uh, perhaps for future endeavors on the moon. And I wanted to take a look at our tech tree for a sec. So here's the state of our tech tree. We've got the claw here. That's really the only thing that we have an unlock at this tier. And the only question is whether I want something from some higher tier that uh, makes me want to not unlock the claw just yet. Rover wheels would be interesting. I haven't really used these parts much in, in the context of a series. Could try them out. Uh, I don't know what kind of a uh, what kind of a single stage system they could possibly create. Uh, could be very useful instead of having the bulky thing we've got now. Otherwise, it's just the usual stuff. Yeah, let's unlock the claw first. I haven't done much with ion propulsion. But if we get ion propulsion, we really need the solar panels as well. These Gigantor. Let's unlock these uh, solar panels and ba batteries first. And then... My next thing will be aiming for this, these, the ion engine and the xenon container. Okay, so that's part of the plan. I haven't used that in any series. I Have I used that ever, the ion engine? Maybe not. Anyway, so we can look forward to that. So, uh, more missions on the moon, mission to Jewel, and other hijinks coming up in the next episode. So uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.